Let's read together our text for this evening. Romans 11, verses 25 through 27. We're going to major especially on the first half or thereabouts of those three verses. Romans 11, verses 25 through 27. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. This evening, beloved, in our ninth sermon on Romans 11, we come to the crux of this chapter. Our text contains the most controversial lines in all of Romans 11. Controversial because our text presents a concise <coughs> statement of God's purposes with Israel in the New Testament age. Blindness, in part, has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in, and so all Israel shall be saved. Not everyone agrees on what this means, to put it mildly. There are many different ideas out there regarding God's purposes with Israel. That's the first thing with regard to Israel. And then, one's view of ethnic Israel in the New Testament age has in turn huge implications for one's eschatology, that is one's view of the end times and the various millennial schools, post-millennialism, pre-millennialism, and pre-millennial dispensationalism, big names. We hold to reformed amillennialism, the fourth big word. I'm not now going to explain those terms. Furthermore, one's view of God's purposes with Israel, first of all, Along with one's view of the millennium, secondly, that in turn affects your view of Bible interpretation, and most especially, two portions of Scripture. The book of Revelation. What you hold about Israel's future, and what you hold about millennialism, gives you a perspective on the last book of the Bible, Revelation. And then the other portion of the Scripture is the Old Testament writing prophets. The four major prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, and the twelve minor prophets. <coughs> and our text itself indicates that one's view of Israel's future, that especially in verses 25 and 26, is intimately connected with how one interprets the Old Testament prophets. Because verses 26 and 27 are two quotations from Isaiah and Jeremiah. And we'll deal with that more briefly, very briefly in fact, <coughs> in the second point of the sermon. Now all of this might seem hard to some of you. But there's no need to worry because at least all of us here, and there aren't that many children, being so cold and many of them sick. These two simple ideas should be grasped. First of all, as long as you get this, you can carry on. There are big issues involved in the interpretation of Romans 11, 25, 26 and 27 and there is a lot to this subject. And how does the Apostle begin our text? For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, 
lest you should be wise in your own conceit. I don't want you to be ignorant. If you're ignorant, then all sorts of disastrous consequences follow. Paul did not want Gentile Christians, including us, to be ignorant. He, in other words, to put it positively, wanted us to know these things. God does not want us to be ignorant of the teaching of these three verses. We know this because, first of all, God calls them to be inspired, and God calls this bit to be inspired. I don't want you to be ignorant of it. And then God sent a preacher here tonight, despite the snow, to explain it to us as members of the Church of Jesus Christ. We want each of us too tonight to personalize and internalize this word of God. So what each one of us here says, though I might struggle with bits of this sermon, which is understandable because it's the hardest one in this very difficult chapter, I, let each one of us say, I do not want to be ignorant of this mystery. Lest, to use the language of our text, lest I should become wise in my own conceits. There's a way in which someone can be wise in his own conceits or proud through knowledge. Knowing without love makes you proud. Well, there's a way of becoming proud not only through knowledge but through ignorance. Ignorance of the mysteries of Scripture, ignorance of the deep doctrines of the Bible will make people proud. Humility is not to be equated with ignorance. I want to know about this mystery, about blindness in part happening to Israel until the Gentile. I want to know. That's the right attitude. And since... I don't want to be an ignorant Christian and I don't want to be ignorant about what God teaches about Israel and about the end times and interpreting the Old Testament prophets. I'm going to make every effort this evening to listen to the preaching of God's word. I'm going to pay attention and not going by God's grace to let my mind wander because God does not want me to be ignorant of these mysteries and he speaks to me tonight through the preaching. That's, that's the way of it. And for reasons of weather, we don't want our, we'll still say it though, we don't even want our children to be ignorant of this mystery. And that's why we send them to catechism. We send them prepared properly. And that's why we send them to church. And that's why we train them to sit. And we train them to listen. And we train them to learn. And we ask questions of them and so on because we don't want them to be ignorant of this mystery or anything else in the word of God. Because we know that if they're ignorant, then they'll become vain in their own conceits. Their head will be filled with hot air. And we don't want that. And we'll say a bit more about this at the very end in the third point of our sermon. Now let's hearken to God's word on the mystery of the salvation of all Israel. The mystery of of the salvation of all Israel. First of all, the scriptural meaning, verses 25 and 26, which will constitute the bulk of our sermon. Then, the Old Testament citations in verses 26 and 27, and then the pastoral motivation. I don't want you to be ignorant of this. The mystery of the salvation of all Israel. The scriptural meaning, the Old Testament citations, and the pastoral motivation.